When it comes to system tuning, are the omnidirectional mics we use to capture data actually omni? I read in books and have been told by, by mentors to make sure and point microphones at what I'm measuring, and that makes sense. We want to pay attention that way. But if it's an omnidirectional mic, isn't it picking up energy in all, in, uh, all directions equally? So today I decided to test it. I've heard it was as much of a 6 dB drop off in the high frequencies, and that makes sense because high frequencies, when they're curving around a microphone, can it get to the capsule in the same way that low frequencies can? So I you know, just set a little experiment up in my studio and we're gonna walk through that. And we're also gonna see as a bonus, do windscreens actually affect your measurement? This is a question too. That's something that you can measure, but just in case you don't have a rig or wanna find out, we're gonna walk through that today in just a little bit of a pragmatic approach. If you want to get better results out of your sound systems to understand the more underlying physics with what's going on, I suggest you get my Audio Math Survival Spreadsheet. I got that at the link below or at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. I truly believe building a solid foundation and understanding of how sound works will pave the way for a successful feature for you as an A1 or systems engineer. So that means being comfortable with frequency, period, wavelength, phase delay, decibels, all of these things are core to understanding how to get great results every sound system and this has more than just how to understand these core uh, components of sound but how do you look at comb filters this tells you if you need delay speakers how can you figure out the perfect front fill speaker spacing anyway i think this would be really helpful to you get it at the link below anyway so let's jump into my little studio setup and walk through what i've got going in smart and go through our demo here are, we got our setup right here. This is my trusty Fostex PM 0.5N speaker that I got 10 years ago, just a great little thing to mess around with. And my measurement microphone is the iSimCon EMX7150, running that here into Smart. And this will serve as our control measurement. So it is where we are able to have it pointed straight at the tweeter, directly on axis. This is perfect clean data that will compare against it. We're gonna throw the windscreen on and then do two more measurement positions. We're gonna point it straight up at the ceiling and measure there so it's 90 degrees off from here and then we'll point it at the back wall. So 100 degrees, 180 degrees off and see if that's any diff different. And we'll do a windscreen measurement on each time just to see if that affects anything, just for funsies. Cause we wanna see if that data is consistent. All right, so let's hop right into it. Here we'll capture this measurement first as our control. So label that forward, no windscreen. So now let's capture it with the windscreen on. So right there, I don't see a whole lot of difference, <laughs> which is which is pretty cool to check that out. I'd always thought there was a bigger one until I really tested it for myself. And these are very, very, very similar. So right off the bat, we've, we've solved that. We know that a windscreen does very little to our data. We see a very, very slight phase shift here at the high frequencies, but nothing to write home about here in the magnitude trace. So now I'm going to turn the generator back on and face it back towards the, the ceiling with the windscreen off. There we are, 90 degrees at the ceiling, and it's really similar to our measurements, except that we see a slight dip in the high frequencies, basically above 
8K, so something to note there. So 9 degrees offset is going to change that there. We actually have less of a change between no and yes windscreen than we did when we changed the mic position. All right, now let's try it with the windscreen on. And it is very similar. So if you just compare these two measurements now, we have our two 90 degree measurements. Sorry, that one's not hiding for whatever reason. So yeah, these two are really, really close. So windscreen isn't changing anything at the four position or at 90 degrees. So, but we do see them a difference between that and their four positions. And what I was doing earlier is just looking at the face trace while I was sliding the microphone back and forth. So right here, just in high frequencies, I got them lined up. So I knew that the microphone was at the same position as it was, but just aimed at the ceiling. And I lowered it a little bit to make it even with the tweeter height. So now let me turn it around, face it backward and do the same thing. All right, so we got that guy. So it's a face it completely backwards. No windscreen. Now let's capture with the windscreen and then we'll compare the data. There we are. So still no difference here. We hide all these, bring this guy back. And yeah, so windscreen in any position on axis at the ceiling or completely backwards doesn't do anything. So that's good to know. And uh, because I thought it might be varying depths uh, from this, the, the, the width and of the windscreen around the capsule might change something, but it doesn't. So that's interesting. So all energy arriving at all different incidences is going to be the same with the windscreen. And then secondly, so let's compare the no windscreen measurement of 180 degrees around to facing forward. And that is the difference we're seeing up here. It looks like in the top end, so I got 1K to 16K here, and this is the difference, is basically from 8K and up is where we start to see a separation. I mean, it's not a ton, probably, let's see, right at this, probably say biggest gap right here in the highest frequency, so 17K. That one's down 5 dB, and then let's look at it here. That's down like one or two. So it's like a three or four dB difference at those frequencies. So not the end of the world, but something to note. I thought it was actually going to be a bigger discrepancy. So really good to know that that's what's happening on. So to review, we looked at a microphone facing forward, facing at the ceiling, then completely backwards and compared them with windscreen and without to basically see is an omnidirectional microphone really omni? What I'd like to do in the future is compare a microphone that maybe uh, is not quite as nice as this microphone to see if we get the same thing. But at least with this EMX 7150, I was surprised to see that it even com facing completely backward, <laughs> I was able to get a really, really similar frequency response below 8K and even a 3, 4 dB decibel difference max in the high frequencies. I was expecting 6 and I was expecting it to happen from maybe 2K and up. So really interesting to know. I still would think it's a good idea to point your microphones at speakers, even if it's not that big of a difference, just so we can, we can get the best data. And 
each measurement, you know what we're looking at. So there's that. I would encourage you to, in the field, do your own experiments like this. If you have a question, you have a tool that can measure it. Even if you don't have smart, get open sound meter, get cross light, get whatever, and go after these experiments. All right, my name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time.